The next thing I want to cover in this video is how to customize deployments. We'll do two different things. The first is the deployment strategy, and the second is going to be setting up a release command so that you can run a command just before your uh, new virtual machines, your new version of your application is deployed, which helps you run things like migrations to your database. So first things first, let's just check out the documentation on our deployment strategies. And there's a few. So we can do rolling, immediate, canary, blue-green, and that's it right now. Uh, and they all have different trade-offs, which you can read about here. What I'm going to do is just show you how you can uh, modify it. You can pick whichever one works best for you. I personally like blue-green, and we're going to do that one in this video, both because I like it and because it also requires an extra configuration, which is to set up health checks for your application. And why not show you that too? It's also a great feature. OK, so all of this configuration is done in your fly.toml file. That's why I was just looking at the documentation for your fly.toml over here, right? fly.toml config. So let's just go ahead and edit my fly.toml. And we'll see we have the build section, our env section, our HTTP service section, and all that good stuff. The first thing I'm going to do is set up a deploy section. The deploy section here is going to have um, the option to let us set the deploy strategy. So under our brackets here for deploy, because we're working in a toml config, we'll do two spaces. I'm going to do strategy equals, in quotes, blue-green. So now this will work with a blue-green strategy. But this will not work yet. If I go ahead and try to do a fly deploy, it's going to give me an error saying it's not going to do it because there's no health check set up. The blue-green strategy is going to spin up virtual machines and a copy of our application. It's going to run health checks. And if those health checks pass, then it pro um, promotes the, the green or the blue section, right? The, that duplicate infrastructure to uh, be the stuff that's in production. It gets production traffic, and the old servers get to delete it. So we need a health check for that. So under here, we can just add another section as well as per our documentation on health checks. Uh, under here, I'm going to do the HTTP service dot checks section, and we can just you know basically copy and paste this thing. Uh, with a grace period, an interval, a method, a timeout, right? So grace period is the amount of seconds uh, it gets before it's going to start checking health checks. Um, you know, if it's failing for 10 seconds, uh, that's fine. It's still going to let it um, go before it marks it as failed for at least 10 seconds. The interval is going to check every 30 seconds. Um, I'm actually going to reduce this lower to like 15 seconds, which actually helps speed up deploys at the cost of your application getting, you know, more requests every 15 seconds instead of 30. The method is going to be get. It's going to be the path, just the route, because that's basically the only route I have available in my app right now, and a timeout, right? So if it timeout times out after five seconds, then it's going to be marked as failed. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this. I'm going to just go ahead and throw this underneath our HTTP service section, but it doesn't actually matter where in your toml file this goes. I'm going to change this to uh, 15 seconds so that the uh, deployment is just a little faster than that 30 second for the interval of how often it checks the health. And that is basically it for blue-green deploys. Let's go ahead and check out and see what this is going to do. I'm just going to run a fly deploy here, and that should do it. We'll see if it works. This deployment is much faster because it's mostly reading from cache within the uh, remote builder that it uses to run Docker builds, right? So it's actually nice and fast. That's awesome. It uh, can reuse the Docker layer caching because you're always building or your image, your application image, against uh, the same Docker instance, right? It doesn't get blown away. Uh, between deployments, so you just get to use Docker caching, right? No matter what machine you're actually deploying from. Okay, so it had a blue deployment currently. It just it assumed the current running servers are blue, and now it's running a green machine. It's creating the green machines. It creates two of them. It's going to wait for those to be uh, passing their health checks once they're created, right? It's unchecked, and now we have zero one passing. In uh, 15 seconds, a little bit more, it's going to see that they're healthy, I hope and mark them as healthy, and then switch over production traffic to the green servers, and then finally destroy the blue servers. OK, and it did it. And it's actually pretty quick. If you have a lot of servers, blue-green is actually a little faster because it does some stuff in parallel. It's the faster deployment method, especially when you have multiple servers to deploy to. So we can see that it became healthy, and now they're ready. And then they were accepting production traffic, and now uh, the old machines were destroyed. So if I go over here, uh, actually over here, we'll see that 
the servers uh, are running, or my application is up and running, obviously the servers are running too. I think we'll have two servers up and running because I just replaced them uh, both and started them both to do the health checks, right? So now they're both started, and after a little while of idleness, they'll both be stopped until the next request comes in, just like we saw in the last video. Okay, the second thing I want to cover here is the release command. The release command is useful for things like running migrations just before you deploy, or you know, at the time of deployment. So our configuration for that is here. It is literally just the words release command, and then you just run you know, the command that you want to run relative to the working directory as set in your Docker file, which is set to uh, the var.html directory, which is where the code lives in the Laravel containers. So we can just do a release command of something like PHP artisan migrate force if we want to, or whatever makes sense for your application. So again, that's just a fly toml setting. Down here, I can do uh, release underscore command equals some string, and in our case, that's PHP artisan migrate and force because it's in production. Uh, the force flag tells it not to prompt us to ask it for sure we want to do this so it doesn't hang. And that's really it. Now, if I go ahead and do this right now, this is going to try to run migrations against whatever the default for Laravel is, which is like MySQL at localhost, which doesn't exist in our case. We don't have a database yet. So this is going to fail if I run it. So rather than show you, I'm just going to talk about it because that's all I can do right now. Or you know what? You know what's fun? Let's see it fail. Why not? So I saved and quit that. Let's do fly deploy again and just go ahead and see how this is going to fail. We're going to see it in the logs, I think. So the trick with a release command is that it spins up a virtual machine just to run that command. It's not going to spin up and run uh, our web server or anything like that. It hasn't yet, at the time that it does this, deployed or spin up our, our blue-green machines or anything yet. Here, here we got an error. Uh, so what it's going to do is spin up a machine. That machine will not have any volumes attached to it. So if your configuration has some volumes to persist data uh, between deployments and all that good stuff, uh, those volumes are not going to be attached to your release command virtual machine. But it will have network access, so it can access the network to talk to databases or Redis or whatever you need to do that might talk to some external service during your release command. In our case, we're going to run a migration that's going to try to talk to MySQL at localhost, which does not exist, and it's going to fail, right? Connection refused is the error we got, and that uh, blew up the um, the deployment here, right? It, it halted it because it got an error during that release command. If it did work, then the deployment would have worked, right? It would have continued on with our blue-green strategy. So the important points here are that the release command spins up a virtual machine purely to run that command, then it destroys it, and then it continues with your deployment. That virtual machine has access to the network, but it does not get any volumes attached to it if your uh, VMs that normally run your application happen to have volumes, they might. And the stuff about attaching volumes and persisting stuff on your disk is something we're going to cover in a video coming up. If you do not like this trade-off of the release command, inside of your .fly directory, we have a special thing. This is specific to the Laravel setup. The entry point script is a script that runs everything before everything else starts up. So this is the first uh, script that is run when you're booting up your virtual machine, and from that, things like uh, supervisor is run that then spins up Nginx and PHP FPF and all that good stuff. What happens here is that it checks for directories inside of .fly scripts and anything that ends in .sh and will run them. That means we have a little bit of a hack here we can use. It's not really a hack, but it's not um, in every framework for um, fly.io, right? This is just something that exists in the Laravel setup. So inside of scripts, we can see there is a caches.sh file. And that just runs stuff like config cache, wrap cache, view cache, all that good stuff uh, with no output. It's quiet. But this is going to run every time the uh, machine is started up so that these artisan commands are run for you uh, prior to your application running. You can adjust this as you want. You can get rid of them, whatever you want. But you could also add PHP artisan migrate here if you wanted to, or in its own bash script if you wanted to in this directory. And that will run every time your uh, machine boots up. So if you want it to run every time your machine boots up, that's up to you. It totally depends on your application. The benefit here is that you can run your database migrations every time the virtual machine boots up. And doing it this way not only gives you network access, just like the release command virtual machine, but it also gives you disk access. So for example, if you are persisting a SQLite database to a volume, then you might want to run your migrations in this manner because they will have access to the uh, volumes and therefore the already pre-existing data. All right, that's it for that. In the next video, we'll move on to get into some more details about how to run your applications on fly.